Hello again, Mr Archie Stuff here. So what have we got on the workbench now? It claims to be a, a Wharfdale Linton, but the uh, eagle-eyed amongst you will uh, spot it for what it really is, which is uh, a BSR deck. And um, it's similar in some respects to the one that I looked at um, in a previous video, the uh, Red Fidelity, which had a 1970s uh, BSR changer. Now this is of a similar vintage, it's not a change, it's got none of the changer mechanism here, um, but it's also um, similar age, but um, rather better built actually, and it's got the uh, 78 speed, um, which uh, interests me a lot more. So I'll turn it on now. Now it does work to an extent, but as you can hear, there is a, a distinct rumbling there. If I check the speeds, you can see they're not actually too far off. If, if anything, it's a little bit on the fast side. But that's not really an issue. The uh, main issue really is that uh, if I sort of just touch the deck slightly, you can see the speed just plummets and uh, the reason for that really is that uh, the uh, idler wheel is not making very good contact on the edge of the turntable and basically I think that's the uh, the problem with the noise as well it's uh, it's supposed to have a good firm rubbery grip and drive it around and actually the wheel isn't um, doing a good job of that now unlike the uh, other one this actually has a nice heavy metal platter. It's basically the same design. Um, it's got the cog in the middle and it's got um, this sort of uh, metal pan thing in here um, which the idler wheel runs on and then it's just got this heavy base, heavy cast base, whereas the, uh, the other one just had a plastic one. And the uh, design actually in here too is pretty much the same. It's got the uh, the metal version or the cast uh, metal version of this big cog or gear, um, unlike the plastic one on the other one. And um, this is sort of similar. It's actually a much better mechanism for changing. So whereas the other one basically wouldn't change speeds in stop position very well, this one actually is entirely happy. And uh, even in start speed, or start position I should say, it's entirely happy to actually change speeds. Now the idler wheel doesn't actually uh, turn in all positions because it's being pushed against the, uh, the side here when in actual fact it should be pushed against this platter here or the, plat or the metal platter that would be fitted normally. So let's stop that. Now I've taken the, uh, the sort of clip off the top of the idler wheel, there was a, a C clip or an E clip like that um, on top here. I've taken that off and there was a washer as well, just a little paper washer. And um, it actually looks in very good condition but uh, it's actually, even though there's a bit of flex in it, it's really quite hard and I think basically that's the problem. And I know from watching uh, videos by uh, such YouTubers as uh, Radio TV Phono Nut, that there's stuff called uh, like Rubber and You, which you can buy, at least in America you can, I'm not sure you can get it here in the UK, which um, you can fix these wheels with. And they certainly are rebuildable. Um, it's possible also to uh, use something like a neoprene uh, washer to replace this rubber bit here. But um, I don't have any of those things to hand. Um, but I've got to find a way of, of fixing this. And actually what I've thought is that uh, the one tool that I do have, with that, there's a couple of tools I have, but one tool I do have is the lathe. And uh, I'm talking about my new Chinese mini lathe that I bought um, a few months ago, in fact last year now. And um, it should be possible to turn up a new wheel from um, a piece of stock, a piece of bar stock or cylindrical stock to make an idler wheel. Now the other option would be the 3D printer and uh, it would be quite possible to do the same 
but um, 3D printers aren't particularly good at making round things. Uh, they have to do everything in tiny little steps, whereas a lathe is very good at making round things, so I think a lathe is a better bet. Now, although I'd thought of using metal to uh, turn up a new uh, idler wheel, I think I'm actually going to try using plastic, and I've got a couple of bits here. Um, these were bought some years ago at a, a model engineering show, I think. Um, that was £4. This one here, I think, was a pound. I mean, this is not expensive stuff. I've looked on eBay as well, and there's plenty of offcuts of this sort of stuff um, for not very much money. Um, this stuff, actually, I have machined before. In fact, there's a bit there which I've machined a little bit on, and it actually cuts very nicely. The problem with it is, is that it's not really the right diameter. If you have a look, it's actually um, it's actually smaller than what I really need, and um, this stuff is much more the right diameter. In fact, this wheel is about 40 millimeters. And this bar stock is probably normally 40 millimeters too. So I could do a new wheel out of that without problem. Um, obviously, um, there's more to uh, the wheel than just um, having stock of the right diameter. Um, the outside is supposed to be rubbery and to grip onto the bottom or onto the, the rim of the uh, platter. And uh, these two sorts of plastic here are anything but rubbery. And actually, even if I had rubber of the right diameter, it wouldn't turn in the lathe. Um, it's not something that you can turn in a lathe very easily. Now, one option might be to use something like a, a rubber O-ring, like in this set here. And these are available very cheaply. Um, the only problem is that they only go up to a relatively small diameters. So in this set, uh, 22 millimetres. Um, and what's that? That's the... Not sure if that's the inside or the outside diameter. Um, let's have a little look. So the outside is nearly 29 millimetres. So 22 millimetres must be the inside diameter. So um, that's really quite a lot less than the 40 millimetres or so that I need. Um, now this ring I think would probably go over here. Let's give it a quick go. Yeah, so that would go over that stock there. Now, obviously they stretch, so um, just because I need a, a 40 millimeter wheel doesn't mean to say that I need a 40 millimeter ring. And uh, although um, this, uh, this handy set here, which I purchased, doesn't go up far enough, I have actually found, amazingly enough, one other O-ring in my uh, workshop, and it's this one here. And this one is actually, um, 30 millimeters and uh, I think with a bit of persuasion it will go over there especially as I'll be turning this down a little bit and putting a groove in it. Now I'm going to have a bash turning this up on the lathe. I'm not going to film it as I'm inexperienced with the lathe and uh, I'm also inexperienced with this material so um, I just really want to have a bit of an experiment to see how far I get. Uh, depending on how well it goes, I might make another one and actually film that a bit more. Okay, so I've had a bash at machining this uh, idler wheel. This is the result here. It's um, it's not perfect. I had a bit of trouble with the finish. Um, nylon is very stringy. You can see on the back actually that uh, the central bit is uh, quite smooth, whereas, whereas the um, edge is actually not so good. This happened when I was parting off. Um, I had it running too fast and the plastic was actually melting. So I slowed it down. In fact, I slowed it down to about 270 RPM, down from about 600, and used a bit of WD-40 and it was much better. Um, I got one of the tools there. So I'm using my quick change tool post. This tool is just like a finishing tool, but I also use it as a groover to um, actually cut the groove for the ring to go into. I just moved it in and then back and forth a bit to make the uh, the groove big enough. And um, every so often I'd stop and try the rubber ring on and just check to see how close I was to getting the groove the right width and the right depth. 
Now in the lathe itself I've got the remains of the nylon bar um, or rod that I'm using um, and all the swarf and there was a lot of swarf it wasn't particularly pleasant at all um, and also the um, parting tool so that's a three millimeter blade parting tool and um, it was fine it did actually pop out a bit of the um, the holder at one point um, I nearly had a bit of a disaster with it but I've clamped it back in um, I will buy a thinner one if I can because um, I think that's a bit of an overkill for this sort of work so it's time to do a little test I think um, that's the uh, the new idler wheel um, just for comparison let's just measure it Outside diameter is just a fraction over 40 millimeters, maybe 40.5 millimeters. The old idler wheel is just a fraction under 40 millimeters. So there's a good half a millimeter difference in the diameter, but that's about it. And I don't believe it's a critical now the other thing which I ought to note is that um, I had a bit of trouble with the central hole. I didn't drill it uh, uh, far enough or deep enough on the lathe so I've had to um, go through with by hand with uh, a 4mm drill. And then I discovered that 4mm wasn't really big enough so I went through it again with a 4.1mm drill. I'm very fortunate to have a set of 0.1mm uh, drills um, which I can use for things like this. So. Um, it goes on okay and in fact it'll go on it's not quite symmetrical the bottom is thicker than the top so it will go on quite happily and that's it at 33 now it's a bit difficult to see the um, the other speeds because it will jam against the the metalwork here but uh, Now what I can tell though is that, um, just stop that for a second, is that um, when it's in the 78 position it's touching the 78 um, part of the uh, the motor, when it's in the 33 position it's uh, touching the uh, 33, but uh, when it's in the 45 due to the thickness of it, um, it struggles, it's sort of touching two bits at the same time. So uh, it doesn't work so well, um, or isn't going to work so well. I have actually tried it, but uh, it doesn't work so well. So anyway, let's uh, put the platter on and actually see what it's actually doing. Now it does make a bit of a racket, and I'm pretty sure that's because the central hole isn't quite as true as it should be. Um, but it's achieving the 78 not too badly. Um, if I take it all the way down to 33, again it's not too shabby, it's a little bit fast. But the 45. The 45 is a no-go, um, it just fouls I think the uh, 78 part. Um, I did try it the other way around, let's just quickly do that. So first let's try it in a 78. And that's not too bad. We've still got that uh, rhythmic uh, rubbing noise caused by the, uh, the lack of concentricity of the uh, central hole. Take it all the way down to 33. It does work, although it's a little bit fast. Uh, 
And 45 works as well. That's not too bad actually for speed. So something else that's uh, worth noting is that um, even if I wanted to use it, even if it was actually good enough, which it's not, um, there's nowhere to put the top clip on. And that is because although the overall thickness of it is the same as the original, what I forgot to note was that um, it's actually dished at the top so that uh, the clip is actually not higher than the top of the rubber bit. So, um, yeah, um, when I redo this, not only am I going to have to make it thinner, um, so I'll probably make the diameter smaller and uh, so the groove won't need to go in quite so deep. Um, I ought to make the uh, the top face or this face, which I suppose is the bottom face, really thinner and um, I need to uh, dish the top as well um, or put a or, or inset um, a sort of step in there to allow the clip to be fitted. Okay, well whilst I'm not filming this in great detail, I just thought I'd stop here and show how the second version is coming along. And um, I've sort of cut the uh, the face down a bit here and put the 4.1mm hole in. And then I've cut the actual pulley here. And I've tested it with the uh, rubber ring to make sure that it is uh, about 40mm with the ring on. And uh, what I've got to do now is part it off, which basically means uh, forcing the blade in here and actually uh, just slicing off this bit. And I need to do it as thin as possible because um, this is the bit that faces up. The bit that I'm cutting off there will face down. And it's the bit that's facing down actually is more likely to foul on the uh, motor pulley than the bit that's on the top. And uh, one option would be to make this uh, pulley the other way around, but I just haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. For the um, the top bit, it's not really a problem because I can just face off material here, which is what I've done. So basically the, the edge of the, um, the pulley here is actually very, very thin. Now, as far as the tools are concerned, I've got the parting blade here. And what I intend to do is use that to start uh, parting off. So basically use this tool to make a groove and then use this tool here just to uh, take off the edge of the groove so that the um, the bottom of the pulley, which is going to be sort of here, is um, as thin as possible. So it'll actually uh, sort of be beveled up slightly towards the actual um, slot here or the groove here that the belt runs in. Now I've cut uh, quite a significant groove in the uh, workpiece with the uh, parting tool. Ideally I would just carry on, but um, I'm going to change tools and um, try to relieve the uh, the edge, the bottom edge of the uh, pulley. Well there's the tool set up to relieve the uh, bottom side of the pulley. Now you may conclude I haven't got a clue what I'm doing and you'd be right. Um, this logically makes sense and um, it doesn't foul the, uh, the chuck, although it's really down to the last millimetre or so of clearance. There really isn't much there at all. But it doesn't look too bad. Nothing went bang. And it has taken off a small amount of plastic on the uh, lower part of the um, pulley. So hopefully I'm going to be able to get the uh, parting tool back into the slot okay. Now working this close to the chuck is good for rigidity. But um, there really is only about a millimetre difference or millimetre gap between the blade and the chuck jaw. So if anything goes wrong, it's going to be pretty nasty. Uh, part of the reason for doing this, as I said, is rigidity. The other part is that, uh, frankly, the stock isn't really long enough. Um, I could bring it forward, but um, it's more rigid being jammed up against the back of the chuck like that. So there we go. Parted all the way to the middle. Well, there was a hole, there was a 4.1mm hole, so I only had to part into that, and then the part just fell off. Um, I was using speeds of under 300, or in fact under 200 for the very last bit, and the uh, bit's just sort of fallen off down the back there. So you may have noticed that my lathe looks a little different, and uh, if I swing the camera up here, that's the clue. And basically, I've had to take the guard off, which is not something I would recommend. And the problem is that with... Um, this size of uh, stock in the jaws of the chuck, the actual um, 
jaws themselves foul the guard. So what I'm going to have to do is actually um, extend this bracket here, probably with a 3D printed print, um, because basically this needs to be down like this because there's a, an electrical interlock or safety interlock down below there. Now what I should have tried is the other set of jaws. The uh, ones which I've got fitted are the uh, standard ones, which poke out quite a lot um, to hold larger diameters. Um, these ones are fitted the other way around and uh, may have worked better. Right, well I've done some experimentation and got it fitted in the turntable. So I'm going to show a test of it first and then I'm going to um, actually open the turntable up again and show you it in position. Now it's not too bad, there's a little bit of noise but um, all three speeds work and I've had to um, shim it up a little bit with washers which I'll show you in a moment but um, generally that's not too bad at all. So there it is fitted, um, it's got a little clip on top, let's just take that off and underneath I've had to put um, three little washers basically to get it up to the right sort of um, height. Now size wise it's very very close, I say very close, it's it's pretty close certainly. Let's actually measure that. This one 39.40 and this one is about well about 40.5 or 0.57 so it's somewhere in the region of half a millimeter or so um, bigger and in terms of the way that I've machined it, I've machined the dish in the top there so that the clip will go on, so it pokes through and the clip goes on fine. And um, the underneath is just flat, and I did actually have a bit of trouble with the underneath. Um, it had a sort of nub of plastic which I cut away, and, and then in the end I put it back in the lathe very carefully and then very carefully drilled the hole through again, just cleaning out the debris because... Uh, one problem with plastics is that when you drill them, um, they heat up and they expand and when you then remove the drill, the hole can often be a little bit smaller than you intended it to be. So I'll take this rubber bit off as well now and just uh, compare it to my first attempt. You can see that it's actually, it's definitely of a smaller diameter and it's also definitely narrow as well so it's not as deep um, which uh, definitely contributes to it being um, a lot less troublesome actually in the record player because it doesn't foul um, on the pulley. Now what I have noticed is that although it does spin pretty true if I start it you can see there is a little bit of wobble and um, I think fundamentally that is the reason why there's a bit of noise on the platter and it probably will contribute to wow and flutter. Um, only when I get to play a record on this will I actually find out. I think the problem is that um, it doesn't have the sort of deep bass that this one does. So I think for my next one I'm going to have to um, machine probably a brass piece that's deeper and then push it into a a slightly bigger hole that's um, drilled or um, or bored in the plastic piece. Well what you really want to know is does it play a record okay?
I think whatever faults it may technically have, it does actually play records just fine, at least to my ear. Now the uh, record player does need a bit more servicing, the uh, mat's warped for starters, and I haven't been over the uh, the auto mechanism either really yet, um, but um, I think that's good enough for now. I may have another bash at turning uh, an idler wheel in the future, but uh, this video is plenty long enough as it is. So thanks for watching, and if you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Mr. RG Stuff. Thank you.